Hello there. What is going on, everyone? We've got ourselves the Siege of Coruscant coming December 2nd, up for pre-order right now, and uh, AMG dropped some spoilers for this thing, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Siege of Coruscant. There's some actually some really cool stuff I think you guys are going to like with this pack, like the Invisible Hand, the big providence is actually coming to Star Wars X-Wing. Really cool. All right, we're going to talk about this. A little admin stuff first, though. There is still just a little bit of time left to enter to win the lightsaber giveaway in the form of the $200 Amazon gift card. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Let me know down in the comments if you think they're ever going to do standard loadouts for huge ships. I mean, having the invisible hand show up in X-Wing makes me think about huge ships just a little bit more. I wonder if it's a nod to an eventual, an eventual huge ship pack. I mean, maybe 2023 is the year for it, right? Endor, Return of the Jedi, big anniversary, huge ship battles. I think it could work. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. Also, big thanks to today's sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. Head over to LuxuryPlayStyle.com. Check out those amazing full metal tokens. You are absolutely going to love these tokens. They're absolutely gorgeous, double-sided. They come in a variety of finishes, and you're going to save 15% if you use code VIP. So don't forget that code. Head over to LuxuryPlayStyle.com. All right, so the Siege of Coruscant was spoiled uh, during Mini Stravaganza, as a matter of fact. So we've kind of known about this for a little while. A lot of the cards were, were previewed and shown to us, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the two that they showed us yesterday. So we've got Anakin and Dooku. We're going to talk about these a little bit. Standardized loadouts are pretty cool. I kind of like them. I think that they're great for getting players back into the game uh, if you if they've kind of been away for a little while or if they're new players also because you don't have to dig through all of those upgrades. So uh, so Anakin's here in, in Eta 2. We've also got Dooku in the uh, the wonderful uh, Scimitar, which I always enjoy this ship. Although it's maybe not the best ship in the game, it's still really cool and groovy. And it has those little moving wing pieces, which always seemed unnecessary, but I'll always take unnecessary cool. So uh, <laughs> Anakin is Initiative 6. Um, He's got a very similar reference to Obi-Wan. It can work with either Obi-Wan. It says, after you or a friendly Obi-Wan Kenobi at range 0 to 3, uh, fully executes a maneuver. If there are more enemy ships than other friendly ships at range 0 to 1 of that ship, you may spend a force. If you do, the ship may perform a barrel roll action. And he's got intuitive controls. Uh, during the system phase, you may perform a purple barrel roll or purple boost action. So... Wanting to spend that force in a lot of different ways, of course. Uh, Anakin on this particular build comes with Malice, which is a dark side upgrade. That's going to let you spend a force to turn an eyeball or a hit into a crit. It's going to kind of guarantee you get those crits. And if you do, if you happen to deal them a face-up uh, pilot or crew damage, you get to recover two force, which is such a cool card. They also have a new thing that was talked about at Mini Stravaganza, Ancillary Ion Weapons. Uh, it's going to have two charge, and you're going to be getting one charge back, so you're going to be able to kind of use this every other round. Uh, and it's while you perform a primary front arc attack, so not the bullseye, not the three dice bullseye, but the two dark, uh, I mean the two dice front arc attack. Uh, or potentially three dice if you're at range one and you opt to go with that one. Uh, but you have to decide you're going to use this before you roll dice. So it says, before rolling attack dice, you may spend your two charge. If you do, your critical results deal ion tokens instead of damage. So what I like about this is this allows you to kind of work very, very well with malice. If you've got this stuff, if you've got the, the force to spend and you can spare it, uh, you, you can malice a, a result up to a critical and you guarantee that you're going to deal an ion token at the expense of, you know, hey, I'm also not going to deal damage. This is really great to soften somebody up uh, for the following turn against it's another small ship. Um, or it also works with the scenario that we're going to talk about in a little bit. You've also got R2-D2 who's going to help you uh, recover damage or a shield or a device uh, or get rid of a device if you get those little vulture droids on you. Again, staying very thematic with the build here. You know, you've got Count Dooku also in the Scimitar. He does have the Scimitar title equipped to this Sith Infiltrator. He does have the ability to cloak, and uh, and it's always a nice thing. Um, I believe the only new thing that he gets here is uh, is the Roiling Anger. So so Dooku, you know, he, again, he's got the three force. He's got the Scimitar title. He can cloak. He can, you know, he can uh, give jam tokens out. He also has Malice. Again, great card, especially for a three-force character. Uh, he's got Roiling Anger. At the start of the engagement phase, if you're in an enemy ship's forward arc, you may gain a strain token to recover a force. 
So I believe that was one that they, they kind of retooled an existing upgrade to kind of come up with that new specialty uh, ability just to go on this one, which is a kind of a cool thing. I like that, they, that they'll do things like that. So, so that's kind of fun. Uh, we also get a look at the back of the box from the Siege of Coruscant. Now, you can see this for yourself if you go over to the Asmodee store right now, shop.asmodee.com. They have this available for pre-order, so you can pick it up right now, lock in your, uh, you know, your copy at $24.99 if you're uh, so interested in doing so for all you X-Wing players. I mean, it's a, it's a steal for as many new pilots and as much new value as you're going to have added to your game. Uh, yeah, I think this is fantastic, especially if, you're, if you play either Separatist or Republic. I know I'll be getting a copy of this. It says we're going to get 23 standard loadout ship cards, 3 upgrade cards, 1 the Invisible Hand card, 5 punch sheets, and a rules insert. Now, 23 is an interesting number since we have two factions here, and the reason is actually you're going to be getting 10 Republic pilots and 13 Separatist pilots. Uh, the reason for that is that a couple of these Separatist pilots are limited, not uniques. So uh, three of the, are, we have the, some of those prototypes that you're going to be getting two of. So there's three prototypes you're going to be getting two of for the Separatists. So you're actually getting the same number of individual, you know, like unique cards, but uh, but, but you're getting like three extra copies of on the Separatist side. Uh, that's at least how it looks to me. So what we're getting is we're getting uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan in the Eta 2 and also Shock T in the Eta 2. You're getting Oddball and Wolf in the Arc 170, also Jag in the Arc 170. You're getting Contrail and Click in the Nimbus, and you're getting Kickback and Axe in the V-19. So, uh, so you're getting four different fighters, which is really cool. You're also going to get four different uh, ships on the Separatist side. You're getting just Dooku and the Sith Infiltrator. Uh, we already know about that. We're going to get three Hyena Bombers. We're going to be getting uh, DBS-32C, also 404, and the Bactoid Prototype, which uh, presumably we'll get two of those. Uh, for the Tri-Fighters, we're getting 347 and T-81. Also, the Flak Afrock prototype will probably get two of those as well. And then for our Vulture Droids, you're getting uh, DFS 081 and 311. Also, presumably, two Horchal prototypes. Uh, in addition to all of these cards, you're also going to be getting the scenario. And, and, and I think the scenario looks kind of groovy, if, we're, if, I'm, if I'm not lying here. It looks... Um, I mean, and there's a couple more shown here. You know, Contrail is there. We can see uh, some of that. We can't see everything. I'm going to kind of hold off on talking about the rest of these until they're until they're previewed. But you can see that the, you know the DFS 81 does have the Discord missiles and a contingency protocol, and you've got the ion limiter override on Contrail. So you know you can see a little bit of that. And again, a lot of these cards were already previewed at uh, at Mini Stravaganza, so uh, you can go back through and watch that stuff. You can watch my coverage of it if you want. You can see some of that as well. Um, but the thing I want to talk about on this particular image, now this is also one of the preview images on the Asmodee store, is the invisible hand. First off, we're getting an invisible hand hangar bay. Now, we don't have all the rules for this scenario, but you also have a giant, like, puzzle piece, which looks like two card, like, single standard loadout cards put together, so you're getting kind of like a big square that represents the invisible hand. I can only assume that they're kind of borrowing the theme and the mechanics from episode three where the invisible hand breaks in half and, you know, you, you quote that line, we are still flying half a ship, you know? So I'm sure that that is going to be happening here with the invisible hand. That's kind of, uh, you know, they like to stay thematic and I think that that's pretty cool. Um, whether or not that happens is still kind of how it looks. It makes me think, again, it makes me think, like, wait, are they doing more stuff with huge ships now? And like, I mean, th this is obviously not a huge ship. This is a token. It's not going to be as big as a huge ship. Uh, but maybe that's because it's like the battle's happening up here and it's way down below getting ready to crash, so, you know, like into the planet, right? Or something like that. Maybe that's why they justify it. So again, space is 3D, so it doesn't have to be in the foreground. It can be in the background. And that's kind of how I can, you know, understand them doing this they did uh, i think they used the armada art on this too so hopefully hey you know, you know more capital ship stuff is cool like, I, it means more potential huge ships for x-wing more potential armada stuff and just more gameplay in general so i love it but we also have the invisible hand hangar bay over here which is super cool it's got zero agility but 15 shields and it looks to me like you're gonna have to get those shields down to land people on board the invisible hand and try to to try to like rescue Palpatine. That's kind of what this scenario sounds like. You know, if you go and read the description on the Asmodee store, that's kind of what they're talking about. Um, it does say that you're going to basically recover a shield each turn. Uh, and if you are, 
Uh, if you're ionized, you don't you just you don't roll any dice or whatever. But if you're not ionized, which again most of the time you won't be, um, you we will automatically cancel one die. You get to kind of you know even though you have no agility, you're gonna just have like a, a one evade uh, that ends up just you know. So basically, I'm not gonna be able to roll one damage and and bring the shields down one point. I need to get sustained. It, it kind of regenerates. It's gonna cancel one each time. It's gonna regenerate one each time. Which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I, I I think, but you have to have at least one active shield to recover an active shield. So once the shields are down completely, then they're like then they're not coming back. So as long as you if you get it down to like one shield left, it can still kind of regenerate little by little. Uh, so so I think that's kind of a cool mechanic. I like the way that they've kind of done this this hangar bay. Uh, I'm wondering if this hangar bay card is considered is one of like the three upgrade cards. Are there going to be like different Parts like they have like the center of the ship that somebody has to blow up to break it in half, you know, or are the separatists maybe trying to blow up the ship? Like once the Jedi get on board, are the separatists like, wait a second, we need to blow up our own ship now to make sure that they don't rescue the Chancellor. I don't know. I don't, I'm really curious how it's all going to play out. Let me know some of your thoughts down in the video description. Also, join our Discord and share the discussion there. It doesn't have to end here. It can keep on happening. We have a great family-friendly Discord. I'd love to have you guys check out. The links are in the description below. You can check it out. But uh, I think this is going to be a fun pack. Um, I'd like to see that the, this announcement, you know, this official announcement and pre-order is already up. But it came pretty quickly after Mini Stravaganza. A lot of times we have to wait longer. So it's very exciting to see this. Can't wait to see what else is coming. Uh, again, my hopes are for, uh, well, my guess is that we'll also see a sequel trilogy uh, scenario pack, you know, with the, uh, you know, with the dreadnought, like a, 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 they they dropped some spoilers and what they were were wanting to do, but uh, but I definitely could really see like A wings and X wings happening at the big, the opening battle of of the last Jedi, kind of over the dreadnought again. If they're doing things like the invisible hand, they could do that dreadnought with all those turbo laser turrets. That, you know, you have to take down and and so on and so forth. All of that would be really really cool. I could see them uh, doing all kinds of. Uh, you know, scenarios and, you know, heck, Return of the Jedi is coming up next year. Maybe we'll see more of that too um, with B wings and A wings. And I think they're just going to keep going with these. I don't see any reason why they should stop. I'll probably do a standard loadout for every ship. That's that's my guess. I think every ship that's at least in the, uh, you know, standardized, standard legal ships will probably end up getting a standard loadout uh, sooner rather than later. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Share the video, all that good stuff. Uh, I, you know, Links for social media, crabock.com, Discord, all that stuff is in the video description below. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing and help make this channel possible. Thank you so much. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. So say we all. Wash your socks and call your mom. And I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye there.